Watch those wrist rockets! Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now yesterday Disney released chapter 12 of The Mandalorian and I think I'm kind of obligated to review it by now because I've reviewed every episode of uh, season 2 of The Mandalorian so far so let's review this one. <laughs> Overall, I feel like there's a lot to like about this week's episode, but before I get into all of that, let me first give a quick spoiler warning, because this video will contain pretty major spoilers for Chapter 12 of The Mandalorian, and if you haven't seen it yet, please click off this video right now, because it is honestly a pretty good episode, and I don't want to ruin anything about it for you, and for those of you who have seen the episode, enjoy the video. Now, with most of my reviews of The Mandalorian, I've made it a point to discuss how each episode handles Baby Yoda and I feel like it would be appropriate to begin this week's episode doing that exact thing and this week honestly surprised me with the way it handled baby Yoda because it like kind of like cast him aside for like the majority of the episode which is kind of like different you know because usually baby Yoda is like with Mando the entire time throughout the episode but like in the whole like middle section of the episode he, he's not there at all um he's only in the beginning and the end of the episode which i honestly think is a good idea because it means he has just enough screen time to have a lot of cute moments but he also doesn't have too much screen time to the point where he gets annoying so yeah there's not really much to talk about with baby yoda i did like um you know how they handled him he wasn't in it too much but you know they honestly like really restricted um you know what baby yoda did in this episode because he wasn't in it for like the majority of the episode which like I said I do like that um also I really love how he was kept in a school like we've never seen a school in Star Wars before at least not on screen um so it was really cool to see like a school in Star Wars uh see how schools function I guess in the Star Wars universe and yeah no I, I just thought that was a cool little bit of world building they added and yeah I mean there's not really much else to talk about here so Let's move on to the rest of the review. I really like how this episode had Mando reunite with Grace Karga and Cara Dune because I just think it's really interesting to see what they've been up to since season one. And I really like how Cara Dune became a, um, like, sheriff, I guess, for the town, uh, a marshal, as uh, everyone calls her. Um, yeah, she became, like, a marshal, and I, I just think that, like, fits their character really nicely. And speaking of Cara Dune, the reveal at the end of the episode that she was, like, from Alderaan, I don't know if they mentioned that earlier in the series, but, um, yeah, no, they mentioned that she was from Alderaan, and I, I think that's just a really cool, like, little detail about her character, and, you know, I, I just think it fits her character really well that she's from Alderaan. Um, I, I just, I just really like it. It's just a cool little, like, um, you know, detail they added, and I, I just like it. That's all I really have to say about it. I'm, I'm not sure if they mentioned it earlier in the series that she was from Alderaan. Um, I, I don't remember them mentioning it, but, you know, I, I really like that, um, little, you know, fact about her. This episode also features that blue fish guy that was in the first episode of The Mandalorian that everyone kind of forgot about, and I would have been really surprised that he came back if it wasn't for the fact that, uh, you see him in the trailers for season two, and, you know, I honestly kind of like that they brought him back. I love how they're taking, like, you know, the small little, like, character in, only in the first minute of the series, and I love how they're giving him a bigger role, um, later in the TV show. I just love how they're, you know, taking smaller uh, stuff and, you know, giving them bigger roles later on. And I, I don't know, it's just a cool little concept I like. And yeah, I mean, it, it's all around a pretty solid episode. And, you know, I just really like how Mando reunites with a bunch of people. Um, the, the whole middle act of the episode, I would say, is my favorite. Um, you know, when they're taking down the uh, Imperial base. I just think the action is so great. And there is that weird reveal in it with, like, the, like, clones or whatever. There's, like, the weird, like, clones in the, like, Imperial base they're raiding, and I I'm honestly not sure how I feel about those clones, because they could be clones of, like, Palpatine, and this could be leading into, like, you know, the reveal in the Rise of Skywalker that Palpatine was cloned. Like, I'm thinking those might be Palpatine clones, but, like, I don't really like that idea, because, like, despite what older videos made by me might lead you to believe, I am not that big of a fan of The Rise of Skywalker, nor the twist that Palpatine returned. So, you know, if they are, you know, involving his return in the series, 
I would not be a fan of that. But I also heard that those like clone things might be like shadow troopers. And that is honestly a lot better than Palpatine clone. So, you know, I really like shadow troopers. I think they look awesome. And there's not really much else to say other than they look awesome. But you know, if, if this series is going to have them, then, you know, I, I can't wait. But I, as of right now, I really don't know what those clones are, so I'll just leave them be for now. Then there is also the moment where Mando, Grief Karga, and Cara Dune find out that Moff Gideon is still alive, and it's not a bad moment, it's just like, I kind of wish they didn't reveal that he was alive earlier in the series, so then we as an audience could like experience that reveal with the characters we're watching on screen. Uh, you know, I kind of wish that we didn't know he was alive until when like Mando figured it out. But then again, I guess we wouldn't have that epic moment with the Darksaber at the end of season one. So, you know, I guess they cancel out. And you know, that Darksaber moment did leave us on a pretty big cliffhanger and you know, it kept us interested in what season two would bring. So, you know, like even though it would have been cool to have us figure out that uh, Moff Gideon was still alive with our heroes, we got that epic Darksaber moment and that's all that really matters, right? We also learned why the Imperials wanted Baby Yoda so much and I really like that they finally revealed why they wanted him because before this episode, like we never really knew why they wanted him so much. Like we had like hints, but like I, I, they weren't really, like, leading us anywhere. The fact that they want Baby Yoda's DNA to help them make the clones kind of leads me to believe that they are Palpatine clones because, you know, Baby Yoda has high metachlorians and they would obviously use those metachlorians to help, you know, make Palpatine clones. Uh, it kind of does worry me, you know, that, you know, it could be Palpatine clones. Um, but as of right now, I'm not going to worry about it too much because we still don't know. We still don't know what the clones are for. And I'm hoping it's going to be revealed, like, later in the, in the series, which it probably will. Anyways, one of my favorite moments from this episode was when they escaped the Imperial base using a Stormtrooper transport. I just think the chase scene that they have is so epic. You know, it's like the TIE fighters and the speeders chasing the, um, you know, trooper transport. I just think it's, I, I just, yeah, it's just a really cool fight scene. Like, um, the action is epic, you know, the music is really good. That is something I forgot to mention, but the music is, as with most episodes of The Mandalorian, phenomenal. Like, the music was really good in this episode. I don't think I will ever say the music is bad in a Mandalorian episode. I don't know enough about music to say a certain type of music is objectively bad, but so far I have really liked all of the Mandalorian music and yeah, I mean this episode was no exception. It had a really good music and this chase scene really showed off that great music and you know the editing was great in the scene and great action. Um, yeah, I mean it's Great scene, you know, overall. Uh, yeah, but like, it's one of my favorite scenes. Anyways, after Mando says goodbye to his friends and leaves the planet, uh, we get a really cool scene, um, you know, with, with the Empire, and we do get to see like a little more of what those clones are about. Not really, but we do get to see them again. Um, and you know, it's, uh, it's another really cool scene, you know. Uh, we get to see kind of like what Mando's gonna be dealing with from now on. Bigger spaceships. <laughs> yeah, no, the fact the scene shows us, you know, this big, like, Imperial ship, and then it also cuts to, um, Moss Gideon looking out on all, like, the clones, uh, you know, it, it really makes me fear for Mando, because now, like, big threats are coming his way, like, you know, like, things are gonna start to get a lot more serious in the upcoming episodes, like, finding Ahsoka is not gonna be easy for him, but it never was going to be easy, and I am honestly so excited to see what happens in the next episode of The Mandalorian. Um, so yeah, but I think that basically wraps up this review. So for this episode, um, if we go over to the tier list, I would probably rank it at A. I know, I know, I know. I, I said a lot of good things about this episode and it probably does deserve an I, but like compared to the episodes that are already in I, uh, The Marshal and The Heiress, this episode just didn't like they were, it wasn't as good. It, um, uh, it wasn't as good as those two episodes, but it definitely wasn't as bad or as mediocre as The Passenger. Um, so it's definitely in A tier. Um, A tier doesn't mean anything bad. A tier is basically G tier. G meaning good. It, 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 anything that goes in A tier is just good. Pretty good episode, you know? Um, so yeah, if it's in A tier, that is not a bad thing. It means it's a great, pretty good episode. Um, incredible tier is 
a lot better than that, but you know, A tier is pretty good. Um, and then of course M tier is not that good, which is why Passenger is in there. But yeah, I mean, overall pretty good episode. I think it deserves an A because while it's not like as good as the Ares or the Marshall, it's definitely like it's not like close to them, but you know, it's like it, it, it's it's almost there, almost. Um, but it, it's not enough to be in the same tier as them. So yeah, I mean that basically wraps up everything um I wanted to say in this review. I cannot wait for next week's episode. It is gonna be so good. And yeah, I mean, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you next time.